Think of your long-term goals as a mountain you wish to climb. So you can't leap to the top of the mountain. You have to take it one step at a time. You've got it all wrong about procrastination because it's not just you're lazy and that's why you leave things to the last minute. Procrastination is a signal and it points to deeper issues. It either indicates one of two things, either a lack of direction or it speaks about some hidden fears and beliefs that are holding you back. Now, in this video, I'm going to be discussing and focusing on the first sign of procrastination and that is lack of direction. Think back to a time when you had to assemble a piece of furniture. Let's say you got something from Ikea and you wanted to begin building it. You wouldn't even think about starting without looking at the instruction manual, right? Because the manual is your blueprint. It's what's gonna outline each step that you, you need and that you're gonna take. Without the manual, without the guideline, you'd probably end up with a wobbly shelf or missing screws or you know something that's incomplete. So when it comes to tackling procrastination, you need the same thing. You need a mental blueprint to guide you through the process, right? And there are three fundamental questions that you have to be familiar with when it comes to developing that sense of direction and to overcome procrastination. The first question you have to ask is, what do you want? What exactly do I want? Now, this question isn't just, a, this is the cornerstone. This is the most important part of your journey to eliminate your procrastination. It's not just about having a goal. It's about having a well-defined, crystal clear objective, right? Why is clarity important? Clarity is like a compass. It guides you in the right direction and it makes you have more clarity or be more clear about what you want. Your mind begins to focus on how to get what you want. So you begin to see opportunities and pathways that before looked or seemed like they were invisible. Right? From a neuroscience perspective, clarity activates what's called the reticular activating system or the RAS. And this is a network of neurons in your brain, which basically filters out unnecessary information. Now, when you're clear about what you want, when you know exactly what the specific target or objective is, your reticular activating system helps you spot relevant information and opportunities. For example, the last time that you wanted to buy a car and then all of a sudden you're seeing this car everywhere, right? Your RAS is in action. You're now seeing it more, but it's because your RAS thinks this is, part, this is part of your world. So you begin to see it. So being specific on what you want is important because now part of your brain is working with you to achieve this goal, right? So you, you might be asking, so what's the difference? You know, what is a vague goal and what is a specific goal? A vague goal is like saying, I want to be happy, right? I want to be happy is not going to give me a road now. But saying, I want to spend quality time with my family. I want to spend or see my family at least three times a week. This gives you, this gives you a measurable target, an achievable target. You know you're able to see them three times a week and you know that that's going to help you or improve your happiness. It's measurable and it's achievable. So when you're specific, your wish, I want to be happy, becomes a plan. I'll give you an example. I had a student who was struggling with his academic work, right? Specifically in his maths exam. And he had an exam coming up. So when I asked him exactly initially, what do you want? What do you want to achieve? He says, I want to pass. I want to pass my maths exam. But when I started to dig deeper and I started to ask more, I realized not only can he pass, you know, he's a very intelligent kid. It's not about him passing. It's how high do you want to go? What do you mean by passing? Do you want a 50%? Do you want a 60%? He realized himself that he could realistically go for an 80% instead of a 50%. He knew that if he was specific, that I want to get 80% in my maths exam in two weeks time, that goal went from I want to pass to a specific set plan. Now he knew exactly what he needed to do. He knew the steps that he needed to take. So here are some practical steps that you can take to become more clear and to become more specific. The first thing is you want to write it down, right? The act of writing literally crystallizes your thoughts, okay? And it makes your goals more tangible. It makes it seem more realistic and close. Make sure that your goal is specific. Make sure that it's measurable. You can measure. Make sure that you know it's achievable. It's realistic to you. Make sure that it's relevant to you, right? 
For example, if you say, I want to make a $10 million and you're barely making, you know, uh, 1% of that, you know, that's not realistic. You know, that's not possible. And make sure you make it time bound. All right. Give a specific time frame for this goal. The next thing you want to do is visualize. Spend a few minutes a day visualizing the achievement of your goal, right? This reinforces and helps you remember your commitment and it activates parts of your subconscious mind, which I'm going to speak about in future videos. And this reticular activating system that allows you to further improve the, the quality of your goal setting, right? Especially goal achieving, I should say. And the last thing you want to do is you want to review and you want to adjust, right? And we're going to talk about this more in the last step or the last question, but goals shouldn't be set in stone. Like I want to do this and this is the only thing I'm going to do. Yes, of course, you need to be working towards a particular objective and in one level, don't change the main goal. But sometimes you're going to have to make modifications. Life happens. You have to be flexible, right? Don't feel overwhelmed by your goal. Okay. Now, by answering these questions or writing these questions down or focusing or trying to contemplate on them, you become more specific, right? And you start to become more particular about your, what you want. And you can use this for anything. We're not just talking about goals, by the way. You can use this for, I'm going to see some friends. Why, what is my specific outcome? What, what do I want to get out of this, this, um, this gathering? Am I just there for fun? Am I there to see a particular friend to have a particular conversation? You know, what am I going to do? I'm going out to spend some time with my family. What am I going to do with my family? Is it a fun, recreational, family time? If it is, then I know that I should put my phone away. I should not be thinking about business or working on my business or my career, right? So when you're more specific, then you know how to operate. Now, the second question is, and this is most important, why do you want it? What is the purpose? The second question you're gonna confront is, why is this goal important to me, right? Understanding your why is like fueling your car. Understanding your why is what propels you forward. Your why is the emotional and the psychological bedrock upon which your what is built. It's the driving force that sustains you, that allows you to get through challenges and to overcome setbacks. Your why and your purpose is crucial. But why is it crucial? Your why is your anchor. When you're clear about why you want something, when you know exactly what you want and why you want it, you're less likely to be swayed by distractions or by something that's discouraging. Your why is your internal compass and it guides you through the fog of procrastinating, of, of indecisiveness, of not knowing what you want. So your why is essential and the psychology behind it is even more important. From a psychological standpoint, having a strong why taps into your intrinsic motivation. Now, listen carefully to this, right? Your intrinsic motivation is far more powerful than external rewards because this is how you're internally developing your sense of gratification because it aligns your core values and your beliefs with what you're doing. And it makes the journey and the, 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 the goal that you're working towards more fulfilling. So when you align your why with your purpose or your values, it becomes more fulfilling. And then of course you have the spiritual dimension, right? From the spiritual context. For example, from a spiritual context, we know that God created us for a reason. And the reason why he created us is to worship. And the best form of worship is to utilize what he's given us, the gifts that he's given us to become the best version of ourselves. And in doing so, we are going to have our own individual purpose, our own individual mission in life. And attaining this mission with the, the tools that he's given us is part of our spiritual journey. So if you align what you want and why you want it with your purpose and what God wants from you, now you're stacking psychological, emotional and spiritual paradigms. I'll give you another example, right? I had a student of mine who wanted to be a professional soccer player and he was neglecting his academics. He wasn't studying hard. And look, he made a good argument when, when I was talking to him. He made a really good argument. He said, sir, we say that when you want to achieve a goal, you have to go all out on your goal, right? Don't have a plan B. He says, I want to be a professional soccer player that plays for Australia. That's my plan A. Well, I don't want to get into school. I don't want to go to university. Why should that be my plan B? Why should I have a plan B? I'm not going to accept it for answer, which is a good mentality to have. The problem he was missing was he thought that either he could have this or that. So I told him, 
instead of feeling that school is in contradictory or contradiction to your plan A, which is becoming prof professional soccer player, why don't you merge the two together? See, to be a professional soccer player, you need to be disciplined. It's a must. And right now in school, it's an opportunity for you to learn discipline, to discipline yourself, to study even if you can't be bothered to study, to do the things that you don't necessarily feel like doing and to achieve the goals that you never knew that you're going to set, right? If you start setting academic goals and start working towards them, you are start going to start achieving and you're going to be developing your sense of discipline. So now you're tying in the two whys, the why of your soccer, professional career, and the why of school. Anyway, this was a very powerful element. Now, here are some strategies to develop your why. Number one, you want to take some time. You want to take some time to ponder, to think about why is this goal important to you? You want to think about how is what I'm working towards or this objective of this task. And of course, this is going to vary. You know, there are certain decisions that you're going to make. You're not going to have to focus too much on the why. Sometimes you're going to focus more on the what, sometimes on the why, sometimes on the third question. But ask yourself long term, how does this goal or this objective align with my vision, with my values, right? With who I am as a person. The second thing you want to do is journal. Journal your thoughts. Write, writing down your why can help bring clarity and commitment, okay? And it's a physical, tangible reminder to remind you of what you are working towards, what you're striving for. So journaling is powerful. It allows you to access the subconscious mind. The third is to share your why. Telling someone that you trust, of course, someone that you respect, someone that you know values you. Tell them about your why. Tell them about your purpose, right? If you're trying to achieve a big goal, you know, tell people that you trust and love about what you're trying to achieve. This number one can, can give you a sense of accountability if you're really serious about it. And number two, it can allow you to experience the reality of it, at least momentarily, as you build um, towards this goal. The fourth, of course, as we said, is connect your why to a higher purpose. Of course, if you link your why to God, you know, to the bounties of God, to paying back the debt or the service of, of you know, just being created. You know, we had no right to be created and God created us. So just thanking him in that way by using everything he's given me for good, to give good, to, to, to spread good, to share good, to be good, right? This can give you an extra layer of spiritual motivation and spiritual resilience. And the fifth step you need to, to uphold is to always revisit this, always come back to your why, because your why is going to evolve. It's gonna, it's gonna expand over time. So make it a habit that you revisit it, you come to it, you come and remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing, why you're working on this task, why am I trying to get this mark in my exam, why am I trying to lose this much weight, right? Why am I make, so trying to make $10,000? So if you remind yourself and you induce yourself emotionally, that plays a big role. So by deeply understanding this and understanding your why, you're not just setting a goal, you're now making emotional, spiritual, psychological investments. This investment is going to pay its dividends with what? With resilience, with focus, and hopefully and ultimately with success. I know it's a lot. We're almost finished. Now we go to the last question. How will you achieve it? the action plan? Now, the how is your roadmap. It's your step-by-step -step guide to reaching your destination. It's, as they say, it's where the rubber meets the road. And without a clear action plan, procrastination becomes the default setting and distractions become irresistible. So let me talk to you about the neuroscience behind creating an action plan and why it's important. So when you create an action plan, you're essentially you're giving your brain a roadmap to follow. This activates what's called the prefrontal cortex. This is basically the CEO of your brain, okay? And it's responsible for executive functions like planning, decision-making, um, self-control. This is like activating a GPS, right? Your prefrontal cortex creates a GPS for your journey and it helps you navigate through distractions and it helps you make informed decisions. That's why, in essence, a well-defined action plan acts as a neural anchor, something that can bring you back to a particular state, keeping all of your, your cognitive resources and your brain focused on the task at hand. It minimizes the mental load. It allows you to access and to allocate your attention in a more effective and efficient manner. This is why if you have an action plan, you will feel less overwhelmed and you have more control. But unfortunately, in today's world, everything is designed for immediate satisfaction. From one-click purchases to, you know, 
food being sent to my house, binge watching, watching um, everything. Our environment has been engineered to deliver what's called quick dopamine. Quick dopamine hits. But here's the catch. See, dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it signals reward. It's not the reward itself. It's like the smell of food. It's enticing, it smells enticing, but it's not nourishing. It doesn't fill my body. The culture of instant gratification is exactly this. It's a double-edged sword. Because what it does is it offers momentary pleasure. It makes you feel momentarily like you are rewarded, but it's just a signal. But it leaves you over time emotionally and psychologically bankrupt. Think of your long-term goals as a mountain you wish to climb. So you can't leap to the top of the mountain. You have to take it one step at a time. Each step is a micro goal, a mini victory. A mini victory that brings you closer to the ultimate goal, which is climbing the mountain. Without each and in every individual step, there is no way that you're gonna make it up there, right? And the beauty of this, or the beauty of micro goals, lies in how simple they are and how attainable they are because they act as the stepping stones that make the journey less daunting and they make it more manageable. Each time you achieve a micro goal, you're not just moving forward, you're building what's called momentum, right? It's like a snowball that's rolling down the hill. It starts small, but it gathers speed and it gathers speed. And as long as it goes, it's getting faster and faster. When you focus on micro goals, when you bring the whole big, when you focus on micro goals and you bring the whole big goal down into micro points, you're, you're basically hacking your brain's reward system. You're creating a cycle of positive reinforcement where each small win fuels your motivation and it pushes you towards your goal. I'll give you an example. For example, if your goal was to make $10,000 in three months, the first thing you want to do is you want to dissect this $10,000 from three months into $850 per week. And now you want to make $850 per week. And every time you make the $850 per week, you're going to feel like you are moving towards this goal, right? You're feeling motivated. You've, you've, you've stimulated the reward, okay? This is a micro goal. If you find that you can't make this, you can't make the $850 a week, then you know that this isn't the right result for me. This isn't the right objective. This isn't the right, I said I have to set um, lower goals or lower objectives or real standards, right? So it allows you to reassess. So either you're making it and you're feeling good because you're feeling like you've achieved your goal or you're not making it. So you know that you have to tweak a bit in your what, what is it that you want, okay? So to summarize this, I'm going to break it down into some simple steps. The first thing you want to do is you want to break down your big goal. So divide your main goal into small bite-sized chunks, right? Use like to-do lists or apps that can help you keep track of all these tasks. There's a beautiful one called Notion, which I use and helps me manage all the different things that I'm working on. But you basically get the big goal and you see what are the small tasks that I need and cut them up into pieces. Then comes the sec second step. You set deadlines. You put a specific time frame for each task. Now, deadlines create a sense of urgency and a sense of accountability, okay? And they allow you to motivate, self-motivate yourself to, to, to finish the task as soon as possible. The third thing you wanna do is you wanna prioritize. See, not all tasks are created equal. There are different ways that you can use to categorize tasks based on their urgency and their importance. I am more than happy to make a video on this and explain this in terms of um, time management. If you would like me to make a video on that, please share in the comments below. The fourth is to review and adjust. Regularly, like we said, you always have to go back to your action plan. Make your adjustments. Life happens, things happen. Don't use the things that happen that come up in life as an excuse. Adjust them and align them to the action plan, all right? Don't use them as an excuse to procrastinate. And the fifth thing is you want to celebrate small wins. Each time you achieve a micro goal, each time you do something on this on this action action plan celebrate it okay feel good about it and this is going to be act as a positive reinforcement which is going to allow you to stay motivated okay and this is how you create a well thought out action plan with all the steps because you're not you're no longer just dreaming about your want what you want you're doing you're turning your what and your why into tangible results making your journey not just you know a dream and a quest but it's a fulfilling adventure so there you have it a comprehensive guide to mastering procrastination through a threefold blueprint clarity knowing your what purpose knowing your why and an action plan knowing your how
Now we've journeyed through the neuroscience of action plans, the pitfalls of instant gratification, the transformative power of micro goals. But if you've got all of these and you, you feel like you're still finding yourself procrastinating, then we need to dig deeper. This is where I ask you to stay tuned for part two, because we're going to explore the hidden fears and the beliefs that might be holding you back. To sum it up, my friends, procrastination is not just a symptom of laziness. It's a complex issue rooted in lack of direction, in hidden fears, and unclear objective. It's an invitation to introspect, to dig deeper within ourselves, to unravel the hidden fears and the beliefs that are holding us back. By identifying these fears, we can reframe our mindset and we can use practical tools to overcome these fears. The journey might be challenging, but the destination is a life of purpose and productivity. And I promise you it's well worth it. If you found value in this video, please share it with those who might benefit from it. I promise your feedback means a lot and it helps us in creating the content that we know you might enjoy and will serve you better. Until next time, I'll see you later. God bless.